Hi guys, on the bench today I've got a Seiko 7019A movement and this is in relation to the oscillating weight and its, um, its necessary placement for it to operate at optimum efficiency according to the Seiko assembly manual and where uh, the oscillating weight should be placed upon reassembly. Now, a little while ago, a question was asked in the Retro Watchers group. I believe it was actually Michael Bolton, uh, the, the fellow who started the group himself, who has his, his own very excellent uh, YouTube channel, My Retro Watchers, well worth a look, if you, especially if you like your Seikos. He's, uh, he's got a lot of great, lovely vintage Seikos and some really great videos as well. And the question was, does anybody know why? Now, obviously, the vast majority of people in there that have worked on Seikos know that the answer to that is yes, Seiko says it's the optimum position. But it then occurred to me when I read this that while Seiko says it's the optimum position, I've never actually personally looked to see what difference it made. I've just followed the manual and reassembled according to the manual. So shortly after that, I, uh, I took a movement that uh, I had sitting in the drawer and I had a little bit of a play about and we're just going to scoot in close and I'm going to demonstrate the difference that this does make. So here we are zoomed up close and here you can see the first reduction wheel with its little hole, the peg, locating peg for the balance cock and the little arrow which lines up with this little hole on the first reduction wheel. And what you need to do is line this wheel up with this peg here which places the pole levers that turn the second reduction wheel, places them lower down or lower, uh, at its lowest point on the second reduction wheel. You then line up this arrow with this dot and screw on the, um, the oscillating weight. In a traditional Swiss watch with a unidirectional or bidirectional um, automatic winding system, a, a set of um, gears, uh, reduction gears and reversing wheels are used, which mean that it doesn't make any difference where you place the oscillating weight upon reassembly as long as it's locked in place securely, because no matter where it turns, it's going to turn those gears a specific um, amount. Whereas with Seiko, they cleverly minimized the system to give you a, a bi-directional automatic winding mechanism without the necessity of reversing wheels and, uh, and several gears. It's, it's a beautiful, simple system because you've got a first reduction wheel, a second reduction wheel and the oscillating weight itself and these magic levers as people often refer to them which do the job. One pushes, one pulls and no matter which way you turn the oscillating weight one always pushes and one always pulls. So it winds things correctly. Now, this position here is three o'clock. This is where your winding stem exits the movement. So this is your pendant down position. This is how it would work where on a left-handed wearer's wrist, which raises an interesting point we'll, we'll get to uh, after I've demonstrated this. And in normal use, you're walking along and the oscillating weight swings like this. And this motion, um, unlike some people think it doesn't whiz round and round and round like a propeller, this it just sort of typically normally use will swing like so. This motion moves your ratchet wheel bit by bit, uh, a click at a time, until it winds up your main spring, which is a slipping spring, so you can't uh, it can't actually wind up tightly and, and get damaged from trying to wind further. Uh, but that's a separate thing entirely. But anyway, so. This is how the thing works, and when it's placed as Seiko recommends, what I noted was when it swings here, it takes far fewer clicks, or far fewer swings to move one click of the ratchet wheel than if it were placed on the opposite side. Now, if you assume, we move the rotor to the opposite side, and you'll see that the, the arms are much higher on, uh, on the second reduction wheel. Now if you fitted the rotor down here with it at this position which means the dot is opposite where it should be, 
then what happens is it takes many, many more swings to get this to move one click, which means it's much less effective. What I'm going to do to show you that properly is remove the oscillating weight. So that you can see that in action a little better. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to twiddle this round so that the click drops into the ratchet tooth. So we're starting from scratch, as it were, and we're going to swing this as if it were the oscillating weight in this downward position. So we go one, two, three, four, five. So it takes four to five swings. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And as you can see, if you, if you watch this ratchet down here, let's just get that back to to dropped into a notch there. So we go one, two, three, four, five. Four to five swings will move this ratchet one tooth. And if we do it the other way, so we'll just again get this to drop into a ratchet tooth. Now, if this was set the other way around, you'll notice also, according to where I put this dot, it changes the position of the pull levers on the second reduction wheel. And then if we swing this as if the oscillating weight were fitted this way around, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So eight or nine times as opposed to four or five times, which is a huge difference in typical daily wear. So during your working day or however, what, whatever you're doing moving around at work, you're getting a much more efficient wind if this is assembled as per Seiko's directions. And you can see there, um, this is a, a beautiful way to, to demonstrate how clever this mechanism is. You've got this finger here which pushes, this finger here which pulls, and no matter which way you wind it, one pushes and one pulls, and it doesn't matter whether you turn it that way or whether you turn it that way, but it's such a simple and incredibly effective mechanism. Seiko did a marvelous job engineering this. It's absolutely incredible. Um, and that's how the mechanism works. And that's why it's more efficient in this orientation. But this raises a very interesting question. Anybody who is a left wrist watch wearer, this works perfectly for because this is where this is the bit that's facing down, uh, the pendant, the stem, this is where it's coming out. Anybody who wears the watch on their right wrist, however, uh, such as Michael Bolton from, uh, from the Retro Watchers group, so this, is, this will be an interesting uh, thing for himself when he's servicing Seiko's for himself. What he should do is actually place the oscillating weight on the opposite side. So while this fits here, Instead of the oscillating weight going in that orientation to get the most effective wind for himself and his own use, and this applies to anybody who would wear the watch on their right wrist, the oscillating weight would need to be fitted in this direction because of this side here now becomes the downward facing side. You would wear your watch in what you would refer to as pendant up rather than pendant down. So... Hopefully, that's been a useful little bit of information for all you Seiko fans out there. And uh, apologies if it took a, a little longer to explain than intended. But, uh, but there you go. The exact same principle applies. This is a 7019A, but the exact same principle applies if it's a 7S26 and many others. It, it even applies to an extent with the 6309s and similar, which have a built-up cover covering the magic lever system. And there are two positions that I don't have one to hand that I can show you. Unfortunately, I've just finished servicing one and had I thought about it, I could have actually filmed that little bit and uh, demonstrated. But there are two positions that you can place the oscillating weight in. And you need to make sure that you place it in the downward facing position towards the stem while the fingers of the pole levers are at its lowest point on the wheel. 
And as I said, there are only two positions they will go on because of the shape of how the oscillating weight locks on. But the same applies to those as well as to the, um, the 7019, uh, 7S26, 7S36 and so on. So thank you for watching. Hope this has been useful and we'll see you in the next video.